We went into this, honestly, with big ambitions. We went in this to try to transform our understanding of Mars. And that's hard to do in 90 days, but it turns out if you have 10 years, you can come pretty close. It's been a decade-long string of, can we make it to the next crater? That first 90 days in Eagle Crater was basically taking all of this information that had suggested that Mars may have been warmer and wetter earlier on to there's the rocks and there's no alternative to there have been water on the surface and near surface at the time those rocks formed. And that's a huge moment in Mars science because now you've got the rocks, you've got the proof. <laughs> so the next step was to go to endurance we saw really a rather narrow section of rocks in Eagle, and now we got a bigger section of rocks in Endurance, and gave us a much richer story about how the evolution of this environment occurred. We got to Victoria, we spent two years exploring it, we went down into it, came back out, walked along the edge of it, peered over the edge of the cliff. And we could see the dune forms that existed and which way they were blowing the sediment. <laughs> and a much clearer idea of the changes that occurred uh, within the rocks when they were buried. It took three years of driving. Endeavor has this rim that sticks up real high. And as soon as we pulled up, to the rim of that crater, everything changed. It was like a new mission, new landing site. It's like it started all over again. We went from what had been a dominantly acid-rich environment, and now we see minerals and materials at the surface that indicate everything that you perhaps needed to support life existed. We have got fabulous science out ahead of us, and I don't quite really know what to expect, but from orbit, we see compelling evidence that this is a place where there are clay minerals in concentrations far greater than anything that we've seen before. If Mars was wet, should there have been life there too? Are we an accident of the highest order, or will life form anywhere that liquid water is present? And to have the ability to answer questions of almost theological significance, are we alone in the universe? in a scientific manner by having a presence on another planet. Yeah, I can't think of any better way for our, uh, our civilization to go forward. <laughs>